Welcome back friends, I hope you have viewed my first video and now I continue with my topic which is cytology. Now this is the second part, we are going to look on the cell theory. Now every part of these topics they have questions in the exam so you must be very careful understanding them well. Now, cell theory, by definition, is the collection of ideas of long-term proposed and they are agreed by various biologists attempting to describe the meaning of the cell, origin of the cell, function and nature of the cell. So, all of the cell theory, they explain about meaning, origin of the cell, function and nature. Main ideas main ideas of the cell theory the first idea all living organisms are composed of cells the second idea all new cells are derived from other cells that is pre-existing cells by cell division third idea cell contain the little material of an organism which is passed from parent to daughter cell or offspring Ambapo hapa tunakotu na RNA and DNA. Lakini fourth idea, all metabolic activities take place within a cell. Kwa hiyo idea kubwa za cell theory ni hizo nne, bas. Some of the books zimeandika tano, saba, ngapi, lakini these are the main ideas. Or cell doctrines, they are called main ideas of cell theory. Or cell doctrine, or ten, tenets of cell theory. From there now, there are different aspects regarding cell theory. Different, different, different aspects. For example here, let's look a little about the challenges. Challenges. Is cell theory what is proposed? Lakini badai, badai development na science kuongezeka ikagunduka kwamba sio kweli cell theory zote ziko sayi. Nyingine sio sayi. Kwa mfano, namba moja. All living organisms are made up of one or more cells. One or more cells. Challenge is cell theory ni kwamba viruses exist as living organism when they are inside the host cell. But viruses are not a cell. Viruses ya wana mundo wa cell. Lakini wana exist as living organism. And they possess all characteristics of living organism when they are inside the host cell. But outside the host cell, they are not living. They are they act as particles outside the host cell. Well, that's the challenge of cell theory. Now, the second challenge, new cell arises from pre-existing cell by the process of cell division or cell fission. So, the challenge of this is that failure to state the origin of the first cell which gave rise to the existing cell. Kwa hiyo, ni kweli kwa mba tunajua sa hivi cell impia zinatokana na all the cell by mitosis. Lakini wameshindo kusema where the first cell came from and even the ideas of evolution, they have just discussed the different things but they failed. That's why there is the spontaneous generation theory of organic evolution which say that living organisms were made by the supernatural power and that idea is somewhat like agreed by many scientists because most of them they failed to explain. Even some of them they said it was the combination of gases, ammonia, methane, what and what, but they failed to explain. Now the third thing about the third idea, cell contain hereditary material of an organism which is passed from one generation to another. The challenge of this idea is that Organelles like mitochondria and chloroplast have proved it to contain genetic material that is circular DNA, although they are not cell. So, according to this idea, manake editary material ibidizio kwenye cell, sio kwenye organelle. Lakini hapa nakuta organelle ndo zinako zina editary material. Ambao kulingana na hii hapa manake nako hii challenge, inakoe na hii challenge cell theory hapa. Lakini, about the fourth idea, by definition, a cell is the basic unit of life or cell is the basic structure and the functional unit of living organism. Lakin challenge hii ni kwamba 
existence of virus as a living organism, while a virus is not a cell and it does not contain cells, yani yenyewe sio cell na pia haija contain cells. Also virus can exist as a living organism, but it cannot carry out metabolism by its own. Yani according to cell theory ni kwamba cell ndio kitu ambacho all of the metabolic activities they are carried out within it as a virus yeye hawezi ku carry metabolic activities peke yake however it is living na haijawa made up of cells or cellular material so these are challenges of the theory now let's go on kuna exceptions kuna exceptions yani hivi tu lazima una video kwamba licha kwamba cells sio ridhipo lakini sasa kuna exceptions kwa sababu ya challenges kuepo pia ziko exceptions of the cell theory so sometimes they can they can ask you what are the challenges of the cell theory they can ask you because of course kama bias ijaandika hata understanding biology ijaandika lakini kuna kitabu kuna kitabu fulani i will upload its picture in my telegram group kama kuna mtu ataweza anakuwa na uwezo kinua hata kinua lakini sasa hicho ndo ambacho kimeandika challenges of cell theory kama ni mzuri wa kusoma vitabu unaweza kaziona lakini kama usomi itakuwa challenge pia so exceptions ya kwanza ni kwenye virus virus they lack protoplasm which is the essential point of the cell and where metabolic process takes place kwa virus hazina protoplasm hazina nucleus hazina cytoplasm they just have dna or rna lakini pia it lacks cytoplasm cell organelle and nucleus hiyo ni kwenye virus lakini the second case is prokaryotic cell they lack their nucleus prokaryotic cell they lack nucleus hence lack protoplasm kwa hiyo kwa sababu zime lack nucleus na nucleus ni combination na protoplasm ni combination ya nucleus na cytoplasm kwa hiyo hazina protoplasm lakini pia prokaryotic cell like bacteria and blue green algae lack well organized nucleus such that they lack nucleus bound organelle yani membrane mle ndani ya nucleus tunajua kwamba kuna chromatid kwa sasa kwa sababu tu prokaryotic cell yeye hana nucleus anakuwa amelack nucleus bound membrane sio organelle hiyo organelle hapa ilikatwa kwa zimelack nucleus bound membrane such as chromatids ambazo kwa jina nyingine zinaitwa nucleolis are direct in contact with the cytoplasm. Kwa hiyo kwenye prokaryotic cell tutaenda kusoma hata kwenye genetics. Huku kwenye eukaryotic huwa ikifanywa RNA synthesis kwenye nucleus lazima itoke nje ya nucleus. Lakini huko kwenye prokaryotic cell RNA synthesis inafanywa ndani ya nucleus ile messenger RNA moja kwa moja inaunganika ina, ina, ina pale pale kwenda kwenye protein synthesis kwa sababu gani hakuna hakuna nucleus bound in the nuclear membrane hivi vitu unavyoongea utakapoenda kusoma genetics utakuta ni kama unaulizwa what is the difference between protein, protein synthesis in prokaryotic and eukaryotic alafu utakuta kama vitu vinakuchanganya kwa sababu gani you didn't understand the basic basic ni vitu muhimu vya kwa understand kabla hujaenda kwenye vitu vingine now let's go on to properties of cell hapo kipengele cha cell theory ndio kimeisha hivi ujue hizo challenge pamoja na exceptions twende kwenye properties of cell sasa properties of cell cell ina properties mbalimbali mbali. yani cell zina properties mbalimbali mbali. kwa mfano hapa the first property a cell is the structural and the functional of living organism hiyo ni property ya kwanza property ya pili a cell is the self contained or duplicating or dividing itself cell it divide itself kuna namna tu stimulus inaweza ikaja kuiambia cell now divide or now stop lakini always cell it divide by itself also third idea cell are formed by dividing of pre-existing mature cell once they are formed they grow a certain size and age from there they can not divide or die kwa hiyo cell zinakuwa zina size fulani na pia seli inakuwa ina age 
Hasa kishafika age fulani inaweza either ika divide au ikadai inategemea sasa hapo kulingana na seli yenyewe. Lakini ya nne a cell is made up of living matter called protoplasm which include nucleus and the cytoplasm enclosed by membrane. Hizo ni seli zote manake. Kasoro kwa hapa sasa ni prokaryotic cell they don't have nucleus. Lakini ya tano a cell is capable of glowing and repairing by itself. Ina glow na ina repair yenyewe, yani kitu fulani kikiharibika ndani ya seli ina repair yenyewe. Inajitegemea a cell is the self contained unit kama ambavyo nieleza kwenye first clip. Note that cytoplasm contain nucleus and cell organelle. In eukaryotic cell an organelle an organelle is a distinct part of a cell which has a particular structure and function. This definition you must know it kwamba organelle ni kitu ambacho kiko ndani ya seli zile mitochondria cytoplasm ndo tunaziita organelles. So an organelle is a distinct part of a cell which has particular structure and function. So each organelle has its specific structure and function as you shall go to see when you will be studying one organelle to another. Lakini pia cell organelle are separated by metabolic activities. Yaani cell organelle moja lazima iwe na membrane fulani ambayo ina separate kati ya yenyewe na na nyingine tutaenda kuona kwenye organelle some of them they are they have double membrane some of them they have single membrane and some of them they have no membrane lakini sasa tutaenda kuona pia umuhimu wa kuwepo kwa membrane kwenye cell organelles so now hapo unaweza kuona kwamba cell organelle are separated by metabolic activities in coordinated manner kwa hiyo cell organelle zimekuwa separated by metabolic activities in coordinated manner lakini pia cell organelle such as mitochondria lysosome golgi apparatus and endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes hizi zenyewe ni mifano ya cell organ. Hii ni mifano ya cell organ. Now, nucleus contain genetic material in form of nucleic acid that is DNA which is responsible for transmission transmission of hereditary characteristics and the mechanism of protein synthesis. So nucleus is responsible for transmission of hereditary characteristics. Lakini inakuwa hiyo hereditary characteristics inakuwa transmitted kivipi ni kuna mambo mengi hapo kuna mambo ya nuclear division formation of gametes protein synthesis na etc in short a cell is dynamic self regulating self replicating complex system that drives energy from environment and expand it for manifestation of all the intrinsic phenomena kwa cell yenyewe ni dynamic dynamic kwa maana ya kwamba baadhi ya vitu vinaweza vika change according to time vile inafanya activity so kama tulivyosema mwanzo kwamba seli zina kozi na size fulani ya kozi na size na hiyo inatokana na kufanya kazi na different factors as we shall see but now let's go to see about the cell size now the size of the cell varies from small that is microscopic to very large size cell exist in great variety of size and shape the smallest size have a diameter ranging from 0.1 to 0.3 micrometer that is 0.00000 meter 0001 meter kwa hiyo hiyo ndo smallest size ya cell na hapo unaweza kuona hii table kuna cell then kuna size kwa maana cell ya mweba ni 300 human check cell ni 60 red blood cell ni 7.5 staphylococcus that is bacteria it is 1 staphylococcus bacteria then mycoplasm mycoplasm nayo ni bacteria mycoplasm huyu ni bacteria ambaye hana seli wo ye size yake ni 0.15 micrometer kwa unaweza kuona hizo size hapo kwamba kwa hapa amoeba ndo ana size kubwa 
Kwa hiyo the smallest cell can only be seen with electronic microscope. Cell ambazo ndogo. Wakati cells with very large diameter can be seen with high with light microscope but very large cells such as egg cell of ostrich and other vertebrates reptiles amphibians and fishes can be seen with naked or normal eyes yani kama kilipasua yai kile kiini unakuwa unakiona kabisa sasa yai ile ni kama tu fertilized lakini it is one cell some unicellular or one cell organism such as plasmodium or euglena have different shape kwa hiyo baadhi ya cells zinakuwa zina shape fulani kabisa ambayo ni specific even without a human body even within human body cell exhibit a great range of shapes kwa hiyo cell pia zinakuwa zina shape mbalimbali cells near the surface of the skin are flattened so as to cover the body hizo ndo tunaziita squamous yani skin imekuwa covered by the stratified squamous epithelium stratified manake they are arranged in layers labda this is the first layer second layer third layer but squamous manake ni flat kwa hiyo zile cell ambazo zina cover the body they are always appear as stratified squamous na kwenye skin ndio ziko hizo cell zinaitwa stratified squamous epithelium tenda kuona baadaye kwenye kwenye types of cell kwenye types of epithelium uko mbele lakini pia red blood cell lose nucleus and they become biconcave yani irregular shape this can be they are mature to produce large lumen or small surface area for the cell to carry volume of oxygen yani hapa inaelezewa tu different cells they vary in shape due to their adaptation to perform different function in the cell kwa kwa mfano red blood cells zina lose nucleus pia zina become biconcave unaona ili tu kuprovide the large volume to carry oxygen kwa hiyo vitu ndo kama hivyo yani ni wanaelezea adaptation pia ukiangalia hapa nerve cell are long and thin over a meter in length like electric wire for transmission of nerve impulse kwa nerve cell nazo zinakuwa zina shape hii hapa ili ku adapt so such biological diversity of shapes of cell related to their function zina relate kwenye function zake. Kwa swali wewe naulizwa hivi, why there is diversity in size and shape of the cell? Why? Why there is diversity? Kwa nini kuna difference kati ya size na shape ya cell mbalimbali? Kwa hiyo answer ni kwamba most things in everyday life in the world are designed to perform particular function au in short unaweza kusema the diversity on size and shape of the cell relate to their function na ukisema tu hivyo inatosha lakini ni vizuri tu mfano kwa mfano skin cells they are flattened because their function is to cover the body or to protect nerve cell are long to enable them to transmit impulses just as in telephone wires example nyingine in conclusion Example nyingine ni red blood cell ambayo ina lose nucleus na to become biconcave so as to carry enough amount of oxygen. So in conclusion, cells therefore modifies in ways that meet the specific needs of the organism. Kwa hiyo kiufupi tu jibu fupi kabisa ndio kama hilo hapo. Now from there kuna different factor hapo ambazo zina determine cell size na pia kuna different factor hapo ambazo zinadetermine cell size lakini siwezi nikaziunganisha kwenye kipindi hichi kwa hiyo tangalia tu kipindi kingine next video nita nitaangalia hizo different factor then we shall move on to ways ways in which cell interact with the environment through their plasma membrane and then we shall jump to types of the cell thank you Remember to click the link in the description below to join my Telegram group and remember to subscribe the channel for more videos. Thank you. Have nice studies.